Hey, this is Jennifer with Jennifer Seaver Art. Today we'll be using masking tape to make a pattern. You'll start by placing the tape on the canvas. You want to be sure you press firmly uh, in order to get a good seal so the paint doesn't seep through. You can do any pattern. Um, I'm doing a chevron pattern here, but anywhere where you want straight lines, you can certainly use this technique. Having scissors available is a good idea during this process. Um, they, they work better for clean lines as opposed to trying to rip the paper. All right, this, this was quite tedious, so I would suggest doing this ahead of time um, before the event, just so you don't have to spend a lot of time while we're painting. And again, be sure to press firmly, that's important, so um, you get as clean as possible line using this technique. I then began wrapping the tape around the canvas, and that's just to protect the, the edges as well. Um, so we'd like to get the full surface covered. All right, now we're ready to paint. So just get a paintbrush and start adding your color. Um, you can paint the whole surface. You don't have to worry about it getting on the tape because you're just going to pull that off anyway. So be sure to get the edges. Um, we do want to cover our edges. And it's important that you remove the tape while the paint is still wet. It actually results in a, a straighter line and it's easy to clean up when the paint is wet as opposed to it being dry. And I apologize for not having this in the shot. I just sort of forgot to make sure that was the case. Um, but as you can see, it comes off pretty easily. I mean, there's certainly, gonna, it's, it's never going to be 100% when you use tape or stencil, you're always going to have to clean it up and that's why you, you want to do it while the paint's still wet. Um, so I now grab a clean, damp, flat-ended brush. So it's, it's what works best for me when I'm doing lines. Um, I would dip it in water and dab it on the towel. You don't want it dripping wet because otherwise it'll kind of bleed too much, but a little wet is, is good because it's loosening up the paint and allowing you to, to move it around to where you want it to be. I started with just water, um, but I did it after a couple of times uh, dipping and dabbing my brush, and I ultimately decided to start adding white paint, which you'll see that upcoming. Um, so right here, I started adding white paint. Um, I just thought it was a little bit easier to work with because it, it covers. So not only um, with the, the wet brush, but now you're adding paint to it, so it's going to cover the bloom. And I just go through, go each and every line you make. If you're doing something that's just like half and half, this process is a lot quicker. I want it to show something a little more complex, though. Um, I started adding a, a more white to create texture, so it was a little bit raised. Downside to that is it takes a bit longer to dry. For this event, I wouldn't suggest um, doing thick or raised paint, only because it takes a bit longer. However, if it's something you want it to do after the event and add some texture, that would be a great idea. So I'm just going back and smoothing the lines. If you make a mistake, it's easy to clean up with a clean finger. Just wipe it off and then go back and touch up wherever you need to. All right. I'm just touching up any little specks that need to be cleaned up. That was my head right there. Um, I go back and I add more white again with that texture. I'm building thickness with the white. I just like the texture, um, but it, it makes it much longer. I think I ended up spending 20 minutes drying it. Um, but now the background's done. So now it's time to use the hair dryer to dry out the canvas completely. You'll need that before starting to use the circle stencil. Tune in next time and you can see me use the circle stencil to complete the piece. Thanks for watching.